you can write this down. Conflict is when, is when we're at odds with another person over what you or they think, want, or do. Okay? Conflict happens when we're at odds with another person over what we or them, all right, what they think or what we think, what they think or what we want to do. Okay? This is why conflict happens, okay? Again, basically, conflict happens when people don't get what they want. Now, don't shout me down because I'm preaching really good. I, I didn't think it would be quiet like this. But seriously, why, why does, what's marriage conflict about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, selfishness, right? Why, why does people have marriage problems, selfishness? People want it my way. I want it my way. You want your way. We're at odds. Amen. If I don't get what I want, then I'll punish somebody for it. And that's what happens, right? If I don't get what I want, I'll punish you. And I'll punish you with my words. Well, this is going to be good. I just got this feeling. <laughs> Boy, this, this nice, if I could get that, whew. Right. This is going to be good. I promise you. It's because this is where we're at. I mean, this is this is Wednesday or this is Thursday morning, hit the road. When, this, is, this is when you're walking into your work tomorrow. Now, before we go to Matthew, let me show you a couple of scriptures. Just let me show you a few things. In James chapter 5, or chapter chapter 4, verse 1 in the New Living, it says, What now look, this is what it says. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war? Where? Within you. The evil desires, the, these wars that's, that, that's in you. Look what it says in verse 2. Uh, you, you want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. Now, let me just say something about killing. I guarantee you the Apostle Paul is probably not talking about somebody taking somebody's life. The Bible says if you go and hate, you're a murderer. That's in 1 John. That's in the Bible. I promise it's in there. So if we're hating people and hating on folks, actually you're just a murderer. I'm preaching to me too, right? You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. This is the deal. This is why people get in conflict. Because they begin to raise something up other than Jesus on the, on the throne of their hearts. Right? Somebody's taking the seat. Somebody's taking the seat in your life. Right? It's either gonna be Jesus or me. Amen. Am I making sense to you? Uh, 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 this is what the message Bible of James 4 1 says. Uh, where do you think all these appalling wars and quarrels come from? Do you think they just happen? Think again. They come about because you want your own way and fight for it deep inside yourselves. You lust what you don't have and are willing to kill to get it. Mm. You want what isn't yours and will risk violence to get your hands on it. Now that's, listen here. What's the point? This is the deal. Conflict happens first because there's conflict inside of us. Now, now listen. This is very important for you to understand tonight. If I'm going to be a peacemaker, I've got to get peace. I've got to have I've got to begin to pull up on the peace I have already in my heart. Jesus spoke to a storm, right, and said, peace be still. Why? Why couldn't the disciples do that? They didn't have any peace on the inside of them. You can't be a peacemaker until you realize that I got peace in me. Jesus was able to sleep in a storm because he knew he had authority over that storm and he had peace in his heart. And the reason he was able to speak to a storm and be able to do what he was called to do was because that he had peace on the inside of him. Amen. See, you and I will be peacemakers in the midst of our storms when we understand what we possess. And I'll show you that. Amen. So conflict is really on the inside of a person first, okay? It's on the inside. Now, you say, well, ah, you know what? I No, let me do what the Bible says. Proverbs 13, 10 says this. Only by pride comes fighting. Proverbs 13, 10. Let's just remember that together tonight. Only by pride comes fighting. It's school. All right, so we're going to repeat this. Proverbs 13, 10. 
Only by pride comes fighting. All right, we're going to say it again. Proverbs 13, 10. Only by pride comes fighting. Why does fighting come? Why does conflict come? Pride. 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 So the Bible tells us the reason we have conflict is because we got this issue on the inside of us going on. And the root cause of conflict is really pride. Wanting my way. This will help you in your marriage. This will help you at work. This will help you. This will help you. Help you in your family situations. Right? Amen. Three elements. We just, I'm going to talk to you a little while. There's three elements to the fire of conflict. And we're going, I'm going to give you some different points tonight. There's three elements to the fire of conflict. Because conflict, we, listen, conflict is not always bad. Okay, it can bring positive change. Okay? But Bad conflict, there, there's three things really that elements to the fire of conflict. Number one, it's the spark of conflict. And the spark of conflict is we have to, uh, people are different and want different things. Okay, this is where the spark comes. People are different and people want different things. Not everybody's going to agree with me or you. And you have to be all right with that. People are different and people want different things. That's the spark though. If you don't realize it, it's, it's the very essence, it's the ignition point of conflict if you, don't, if you don't understand it. Number two, it's the gasoline of conflict. So we have the spark, now we need the gasoline. What's the gasoline of conflict? This is when selfishness and pride drives the reaction to conflict, okay? When, when we, when the spark is there, somebody's a little different than you, has a different idea, right? Has something else that they think or want, they, they, or how they think or what they're wanting to do is different than yours. The gasoline now is when selfishness begins to rise up in you and I, and what begins to happen is it begins to feed the spark. Then we have the collateral damage. If you don't, if we don't, I'm going to show you how to get this all under control, what we got to do tonight. I'm going to help you leave you out here and give you something you can think about. But if, if I don't watch out, this thing will get out of control and I'll have collateral damage. And the collateral damage, there's effects that happens when conflict is not resolved. There's stuff that happens. It happens, it happens in our own personal life. And I put down three effects, and I, again, I'm, I'm just trying to help you out. Uh, uh, when, when, when destructive results uh, happen when responses aren't right, okay? And, and, and these, uh, these destructive results, first, there's a spiritual effect. Do you understand if you and I are harboring unforgiveness and conflict and all that in our lives? You may think, uh, I, whatever it is, but it's doing harm to you. It's doing harm to me. Now, I'm going to show you how important this is to God. I really want to show you this. You know, our relationship is never just vertical. We think that me and Jesus have our own thing going on. That even, that's not even biblical. No, listen, the cross intersects of our relationship with God and our relationship with others. The cross affects not only my relationship with God, but it affects my relationship with others. And I'm going to show you how important this is to God. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 24 I love the Bible, I love the scripture, and I love what Jesus said. It challenges me. Challenges me. Now look what he says. He said, leave your gift before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, then come again and offer your gift. God was telling you, we brought our gift tonight. But the Bible says the most important thing was not for you offering worship to God in here. It was actually for you to be reconciled to your brother first and then come and offer your gift. Th that's how important. He said, listen, it is so important that you need to go get it right. But it, how do I write this down? I gotta, how do I type it down? L look here. This is, what, this is how I put it down. Um, you cannot be right with God and be wrong with other people. God said, it's so important for you. He said, leave your gift. I like that. Bring your offering. Keep your offering here. I'll take your offering. 
Bring your offering. Keep it here. Then go on. No, no, he said, listen, you, it's not that imp- the, the most important thing is not for you to come and have some type of personal thing with me. The most important thing you do is go and reconcile there and then come back, and I'll guarantee our, the result of that, there'll be open heavens above you because of that. Many people's heavens are closed above them because they're harboring unforgiveness and conflict in their life, and they're not resolving issues. I'm not saying you. I'm just saying that's a fact. We wonder what's going on today. There's so much hate. It's crazy. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's the, if you and I don't watch out, you'll bite right into it. And listen, Facebook's the worst place. Well, don't shout me down because I'm preaching really good. Because you can be passive aggressive on Facebook. So you can say whatever you want to to somebody without really facing them. All right. Praise the Lord. There's a spiritual effect. Okay, there's a spiritual effect. If you're harboring unforgiveness, right, it can put you in, your, in, a, in a prison, and it will eat at you. It's like a cancer. you got to deal with, listen, you got to deal with conflict, and we got to learn how as believers how to deal with it right. Amen. There's a relational effect, of course. Not only a spiritual effect, it's under this collateral damage, the, the fire of conflict, the relational effect. The, they got relationship tension and strain. You know the greatest thing you have around you is people. And listen, you, listen. if you don't know how to resolve conflict, you will isolate yourself from people. This is a relationship effect, right? For where envy and strife exist, there is confusion in every evil work. I don't, I don't want to be in strife and tension. Amen. And then third, there's a testimony effect. It's the collateral damage. Spiritual effect, relational effect. I'm going to tell you what the third thing is. There's a testimony effect. And I'll show you this in a minute. But don't let your good be spoken of as evil. The Apostle Paul said, never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you're honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Listen, it will ruin your... T- Listen, if you and I are not peacemakers, it will affect our testimony in front of the eyes of the world. Amen. So this is how people deal with conflict. Again, again, I'm just trying to help you out tonight. But this is the way people usually deal with conflict. They either escape. This is denial. Uh, they run away. Okay, and, and, and this is the deal, it, is that you can either, you'll be a, I'm not, peacemakers are not peacekeepers. See, peacekeepers are those that don't want to deal and, 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 and have resolution in, in conflict. And, and, and it's definitely not peace faking. I'm not talking about peacekeeping or peace faking. But people that are denying things, men are the worst at this. And they run away or they don't want to deal with it. Escape. That's one way people deal with it. The second way is attack. Right? Uh, and, and the thing is, they'll give insults, verbal abuse. Right? I'll hurl my insults at people. I'll talk bad about people. I'll do whatever. Right? I mean, this is what happens. Uh, this is a way people deal with com- conflict. And it could lead to assault. I mean, literally, physical assault. Again, people fight. Why do people fight? Yeah, they got conflict. And this is the way they deal with it, right? They put their fists back and they, they fight about it. Or you can be a peacemaker. We confront. See, peacemaking, you're going to have to confront. There's nothing wrong with confrontation when it's done right. When it's done right. See, well, a peacemaker is a person who confronts in order to bring God's solution and his wholeness. Everybody say shalom. See, that's peace. That's a Hebrew word, peace. And it's in Jewish culture today, they still shalom, which means wholeness. Nothing missing, nothing broken. What is a peacemaker? Someone that's trying to bring God's solutions, someone that's trying to bring wholeness. 
to a situation. That's what the word peace means anyway. Shalom, a peace, uh, irene in the Greek, and it means harmony. It means agreement. Uh, or I'm sorry, wholeness, harmony, freedom from strife and division, no havoc, no chaos. This is what this word peace means. Now, Jesus gave us this in Matthew 5. We'll get to where we need to be. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Jesus said this, so uh, very interesting. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, this is his Beatitudes. Eight different proclamations Jesus made. It's his most, listen, the, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, Matthew 6, and Matthew chapter 7. Jesus' way of living, this is, the, if you want to ever focus on anything, if you had actually any part of your Bible, you would want the Sermon on the Mount. If you could take anything and had everything else gone, you would want Jesus' teaching on the Sermon on the Mount. Why? Because it's his way. He was establishing, this is how I, my kingdom operates. This is how my administration does things. This is my philosophy for living. This is the way that I do things. So his Beatitudes, he gives us eight proclamations of how to have a blessed life. How many of you want to have a blessed life? Well, all you got to do is read those Beatitudes. A blessed life. And he says this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, one of these proclamations, he says, Blessed Empowered to prosper and to increase. That's what the word blessed means also. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called what? Sons of God. He actually says the way that you and I will be identified as a part of his seed, a part of his family, are people that are peacemakers. This is the way that Jesus identified his sons and daughters. See, this is the thing. The good news. The good news about conflict. Guess what? It don't have to ruin our lives. No, it does not. It doesn't have to put a, it doesn't have to put a stumbling block in front, of, in front of me. It doesn't have to put a stumbling block in front of somebody else. Listen, you can read your Bible and 500 words in. Or there's about. Probably page four. You find conflict. And, but you also find a God that's there in the midst of conflict that's trying to bring resolution to the conflict. He actually goes and says, listen, I'm going to go ahead and set up the plan now in order to get man back. See, your God, I, my God, our God we serve is a reconciler. He's a God that he, he's not afraid of conflict. He gets in the middle of conflict and he goes and he brings restoration. He brings resolution to the conflict. Blessed are the peacemakers. Peacemakers. I love that. This is you. This is me. We are peacemakers. Peace manufacturers. What is a manufacturer? It's the place that something originates. It's not a distribution center in itself, it, though, though it can be. But it is the place where something resides and where something is made. Listen, you and I are manufacturers of peace because peace is in us. Well, you know what? I can't do it. Well, then you're telling God that you can't do it. You're telling God his peace in you can't do it. Well, I can never pray for my enemies. Why? You're telling the God that lives in you that you can't. Well, I can never bless those that curse me. Well, that's what the Bible tells us to do. And if God tells us to do it, there must be a grace available to do it. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about being a peacemaker. See, being a peacemaker is not our natural human response. <laughs> it's going against your flesh. Everything. No, you don't want to be a peacemaker. Mm-mm, mm-mm. You won't call somebody up on the phone. Do you know what they've done to me? <laughs> Come on now. Is anybody in the room? Come on. I'm just saying. Isn't this the truth, right? The blessed are the peacemakers. Right? Blessed are the peacemakers. 
It's not our natural human response. It's going against our flesh. But we're going to have to go and pull upon the supernatural power and the activity of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you and I in order to make it happen. Amen. Now go with me real quick to James. And I want you to see this. James chapter 3. Or turn to your, in your Bible from your phone or whatever. I want you to see it. There's something about laying your eyes on something. And I know you get real used to this up here. And we made it really big that way for anybody that has any type of visual problems, they can see. James chapter 3, look at this, verse 18. James chapter 3, verse 18. Now the fruit of righteousness, now the fruit, the harvest of God's way of doing things, righteousness, God's way of doing things. That's what righteousness is, God's way of doing things. He said the fruit or the harvest of God's way of doing things is sown in peace by those who what? Uh, isn't that good? That is right, right? It says you're going to get a harvest of righteousness if you just sow the peace that you got. The new, I think, what, I think the new Living Translation, I give you that, yeah. And those who are what? Peacemakers. This is what the New Living says. Will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. See, it's, it may look like it's insignificant. Or, well, they ain't gonna, they're not going to listen to me. Just, just sow your peace. Just sow it. Because the way the earth is going to change is by the church awakening to who they are as sons of God, right? And we can let the glory of God fill the earth like the waters cover the sea. How's it going to happen? It's going to come through believers. Man, it's a, it's a sea. It, this is the fruit of the fruit of peace. Galatians 5:22. Right? The fruit of the spirit. Right? Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, goodness, meekness, temperance. Right? And the there you go. You, Josh can sing it. Josh sent me you didn't get Josh. Send up and sing it, Josh. <laughs> Josh sent me a YouTube video. Of, of, this is the way he learned the fruit of the Spirit because Tony kept quizzing him because Tony hands these little medallions out to people when they can do the fruit of the Spirit. He tried to argue with me one day. They didn't have it right. I said, no, that's what the King James says. <laughs> he said, I don't know that one. I said, well, that's what it says. Go, go look it up. But, but this is the deal. It's a fruit. It, the peace of God is a fruit of the Spirit. No, I know I've talked about this and preached on it, but it's fruit, not veggies. It's not the veggies of the Spirit. <laughs> I know I preached it, but it feels good to preach it again. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Veggies don't have the ability to reproduce. There's no seeds in vegetables. There's only seed in fruit. Look at you. You're all like... I don't know if that's right or not. No, you Google it later. You, am, am I not? Joe Bailey. If it's got a seed, it's a fruit. Why? Because, listen, you got to be for that person what they need. When you're in the middle of the conflict, you've got to be the person that they need to be. And you've got to sow your peace into them in order to receive a harvest of righteousness. Man, that's good. I got the Holy Ghost chill bumps on that one. Come on now. Fruit has the ability to reproduce itself, but it has to be sown. Amen. See, when I come in contact, listen, it says, blessed are the what? The what? For they shall be called what? When you come in, when you encounter the fruit of the Spirit, you're encountering God. Because that fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22, that's the nature of God. So when you encounter that, you're encountering God. So when you're in the middle of conflict and you're not blowing your stack and you're so in peace, you know what? They're encountering God. That's why there's no law against it. Galatians 5.23, against such, the fruit of the Spirit, those nine fruit of the Spirit, there's no restrictions and there's no barriers. 
Nothing can come against that. Nothing. It will break it down. It will break down every opposition. The most violent thing in spiritual warfare, come on now, is the fruit of the Spirit. Listen, that's why the enemy hates peace. He hates it. Why? Peace is violence in the realm of the Spirit. Peace is violent in the realm of the Spirit. And you need to remember that. Because the first thing he comes to try to steal from you and I is our what? Our peace. Come on. Three o'clock in the morning, what's he coming to try to do? He's trying to steal your peace. Because he knows at nine o'clock in the morning, you're going to run into your boss that, that's, having a, that's struggling with his life. <laughs> Let me just say that. That you're going to meet up with your boss that's struggling, right? Huh? And if you have no peace on the inside of you, he, you're not releasing peace at 9 a.m. in the morning because at 3 a.m. you got it stolen. Come on, somebody. Peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. The enemy, he's what he was trying to, he's trying to steal my peace. I've had my peace stolen before. How about you? And when he steals your peace, he's going to wreak havoc through you. You're not going to be able to resolve any conflict. You guys are all right. Yeah, yeah, I know you're thinking, aren't you? I just want you to know something tonight. I know this is a little off, but listen, nothing works against the fruit of the Spirit. Nothing. And it always works operates in the opposite spirit. See, see, the opposite of hate is love. See, the fruit of spirit always acts in the opposite spirit. It's in opposition to the other spirit. It's always going another direction. It's always going another direction. See, in, in, in Psalms chapter 1, it says this, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. No, that's not it. Help me out. Yeah. Uh, blessed is the man that walketh not. Sometimes I've just got to have that one verse or that one word. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But in his law doth he meditate day and night. Right? In the verse 3 it says this. He shall be like a tree planted by the what? The rivers of water. That bears its fruit in its season. Whose leaf shall not wither. Right? What's the last part? How's that last part go? And whatever he does, he shall prosper. Right? Now look at this. Check this out. This man, this man... That his leaf's not withering, right? Whatever he's doing is prospering. That's blessed. He's planted by a different source. Listen, I'm not going to finish this message up tonight. I'm going to stop right after this. I'll come back next week. This will be. It's what's not supposed to be to be continued, but it's going to be continued. Listen, I like bath. Okay, can I get personal? Sorry, I shouldn't say. I like taking baths. I just, I like it. I, got, I like it. I, I mean, my wife doesn't, she doesn't like me taking baths. She says, well, how can you? I like just taking baths. I like it, man. I'll sit in there so long that it'll get cold, and guess what I'll do? I'll drain out water and put some more hot water in there. Right? Now, listen. If this is going to how are you going to pull this one out? I believe me, I will. That water. That bath water, though, is in subjection to, to the environment. If it's 72 in your house, it will at some point cause the water to be that temperature. Now, a hot tub is different. That's a Joe Bailey says, Amen. See, that's part of my bucket list. I want a hot tub. Listen, I want to go out on my, sorry. I'm just kind of just, it's my, this is my pulpit. I can say what I want to right now. But I want to be able to go out on my deck while, there's, while there is snow flying. <laughs> Andy says she's never going to do it because I'll never get out of it. This is the deal. It's got its own source. 
of heating. It doesn't matter what the elements are. It can be 25 degrees outside. Because it's pulling, it's, it's got a source to be able to pull its heat from. See, you can either be a bathwater person where it just, it'll be hot for a bit, but see, it's always trying to, it's, it's always cooling down to the environment that it's, that it's around. Or you can be a hot tub person where it's pulling a source. You've got your, you've got your roots planted by a different source. It doesn't matter what the environment's like out here. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter if they hate me. It doesn't matter because why? I'm not planted by that source. I'm planted by this source. And I'm pulling my water from that source. And I can bless those that curse me. I can go and be a peacemaker. And I can resolve conflict. Why? Because I got peace. I'm a peacemaker. I'm a manufacturer of peace. My roots are down deep inside of somewhere else. And I'm pulling out my energy. I'm pulling out this stuff from someplace else. Come on. Am I making sense to you guys? You're a peacemaker. You're born again. You've got peace on the inside of you. I said, You've got peace on the inside of you. You don't have to worry. Listen, what if it, it's, it's there? I don't care. It, it's why I, I don't feel like it. It doesn't matter what you feel. If Jesus is in there, peace is in there. And you and I have to become more aware of that than the surroundings. This is the importance, guys. Listen, if I don't wake up every single day and remind myself that I'm a son, that I am a child of God, listen here, I'll let the, that the environment around me cool my water. I'm not going to be a thermometer. I'm going to be a thermometer and not a thermostat. A thermometer sets it. A, ther a thermometer. Thermostat. Yeah. You know what I mean. This is a Wednesday night. I got lots of grace here tonight. We got some conflict. <laughs> conflict. How we do? We good? You good with me? I'm good with you? That's awesome. See, we're, walk we're okay. We love each other. Donald, you all right? The cowboy's lost. That's not good. That brings some conflict, don't it? No, I'm being serious. Though. This is true, guys. I need to become a thermostat. I know it's simple. I'm not a thermometer. I'm going to be a hot tub person. Right? I'm pulling. I don't care what it's like out on the outside. It doesn't matter. My roots are someplace else. See, this is what we call citizenship. My citizenship is in heaven. It's because I'm living from a different spot. I don't live for that. I live from victory. I live from the throne. I, I live from who I am. I, I live from this thing, man. And it produces, I'm telling you, it brings a boldness in me. I, listen, I know it's hard. Listen, I got a long ways to go. I'm just being honest. I got a long ways to go. But I want to come to the place just like Jesus. That's the goal for me. He was pulling his strength and sources from someplace else. Well, yeah, but he was the son of God. Yeah, I get it. But he was also a man. I understand he was perfect and sinless. I get that. I'm not. I understand that. But it's still not an excuse for me. I'm not hiding behind that. You can if you want. But it's not my goal. Amen. Amen. You guys all right? All right. Praise the Lord. Yep. All right. I'm going to stop because I can't go. Because I can't go to the next stuff. I really can't. Hmm. All right. Praise the Lord. Close your Bibles. I'm done. Yep, I'm done. Because if I go on the next one, it won't be good. It will be good, but it won't be good. <laughs> it won't be. Now, what I want to teach you next week, it will start right here, is how do I respond to conflict? How, does, how do I need to do it? And I'm going to give you four strategic keys that will help you to deal with it. I'm telling you, it'll be good.
I guarantee it will help you tremendously. Amen. Maybe what I'll do next week, Marianne, I'll put, we'll put the, that, the pastor's line number up, okay? And then what you can do is that you can text me a question, if you'd like to in here, a question that will come to me while I'm up here. I have my phone. And if you have a question, you want to stay anonymous or whatever, it's cool. Maybe it's something that you would want to talk, me to talk about after I finish that up, okay? So maybe I'll try to finish up at 8 o'clock, and that way it leaves 15 minutes. So if you don't have anything to say, then I'll probably have to open back up and start preaching again. <laughs> Amen. So maybe that's what we'll do next week. Okay, we'll put that number up, and uh, you guys can text me. that It's a, it's a line we have that's dedicated to um, follow-up and stuff like that. So it it's just comes to the church. But uh, if you've got a question you want to ask me, we'll talk about it. Because I may hit something next week, and maybe there's a situation in your life that Maybe it's just not like what I'm saying and how do I need to do this or how to do that. You know, we, you know, we live in a world full of litigation. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. The church is not really taken, taken to heart 1 Corinthians chapter 6 at all. <laughs> now, there's time for litigation. Don't get me wrong. But that's the first word everybody mentions anymore. I'm getting a lawyer. Right? People are scared to death anymore. I, I, listen, I was a nurse 15 years. I understood it. People scared, walking, doctors walking, scared, ordering stuff. You know why? Uh, I can't go there. But you know why a lot of this stuff goes on today, that they have to do this, this, and this, that we all get upset about? Do you know why that is? Because of the, it's because of, the, uh, uh, of, of litigation and, and because of what, what's going on in the legal system that the doctors have to do this, this, and this because if they don't and miss something, then guess what? They're going to lose their practice. It's a shame. But see, the thing is, is that Christians run and go... Apostle, listen, we are not doing what the Apostle Paul said. Read it. You read it yourself. First Corinthians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul said it. He said, don't take people to court. Church people ought not be taking church people to court. He said, the church, you take them to the church and let the church judge it. Anyway, you ought not, it's a scathing rebuke. I'm telling you, if you read it's a scathing rebuke. He said, listen, you ought not even have this problem anyway. You ought to be able to resolve your conflicts. If you wrong somebody, guess what the Bible says to do? Make it right. All right, why, how did I get there? I'm just saying, we live in a society that's full of this stuff, right? Conflict is everywhere. Not going to be wrong here. Litigation is not wrong, right? I mean, there's, there's certainly times for litigation, right? I mean, there's an accident or something happens and they need bills. I, that's, that's, that speaks for itself. But people run off to court way too soon. Boy, I tell you what, quiet in here now. I'm just trying to say what the, you read it, okay? That's your reading assignment. Read about it. The Apostle Paul said it. So there's a place for it, but I'm just saying we live in a world full of it. People want to fight. Mm -hmm. And we can't even get, we can't even get people, we, we can't even get Democrats or Republicans to, to if, if something's brought up by a D or an R, it's automatically shot down. That was a complete circus, the Supreme Court stuff. That was a circus. <laughs> I'm like, look at this. This is crazy. And it's not about, listen, it's not about parties. It's, it's time for people to understand. It's going to come to the church. It's, listen, we are to be the leading force. Amen. Because what happens in the pulpits will happen. It starts with the pulpit and the pews. And then it goes to the people. As the church goes, so goes society. Amen. All right, I'm done. I'm praise what I'm just... All right, stand to your feet. I'm done. Praise the Lord. You guys get anything out of that? All right. Wednesday night, I can just be, I can just be me, right? Just talk to you a little bit. <laughs> Man, I want to, I, I don't want to live my life in conflict. How about you? I don't. 
Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the opportunity tonight to be able to share this word. Lord, I believe you've given it to me. I feel the weight on it. I felt the spirit on it. I, I really have felt, God, tonight that people are needing to know these things. And I know, God, tonight that we may have left it short in the sense of giving them what they need tonight. But God, next week, next week we will. Lord, I'm believing for your hand to be upon um, each of us. And Lord, that we would remind ourselves tonight that we are peacemakers. Just think about that. Say that to yourself. I'm a peacemaker. I'm a peacemaker. I make peace. I'm a manufacturer of peace. <laughs> I'm a manufacturer of peace. Hallelujah. Peace lives on the end. Someone say that. Say, peace lives in me. Therefore, I'm a peacemaker. Mm -hmm. Think about that, church. Think about it. Peace resides in me. Jesus lives in me. Think about that just a moment, that Jesus lives in you. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Greater is he. If God be for me, who can be against me? If God be for me, who cares who's against me? I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Thanks be unto God, which always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I have love in me. I have joy in me. I have peace in me. I have patience in me. Hallelujah. It's in there. Come on, you got to remind yourself that I'm a son. I'm a daughter of God. Hallelujah. I'm righteous and holy and irreprovable in God's sight. You've got to remind yourself of this stuff. Father, I thank you tonight that we are reminding ourselves, God, of who we are in you. It's my identity. I don't have to worry, God, anymore. I am holy, irreprovable in your sight. Ah, you love me. And Lord, I thank you tonight that I'm a peacemaker. And because I'm a peacemaker... I'm identified as a son. It's in my identity. So, Lord, I give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Thank you. You're so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't let the enemy steal this from you. Tomorrow you got conflict going on. I want you to remember I'm a peacemaker. Lord, remind us tomorrow morning. Maybe you got conflict right now in your home. Remind yourself I'm a peacemaker. Remind yourself I'm a peacemaker. Father, remind us, remind us, remind us, remind us, remind us, remind us. It's only by contention. It's only by fighting. Pride. Only by pride comes contention. The reason that fighting happens is because we're prideful. Lord, I'm praying, God, shine your light on us. Bring truth into our lives that we would not be prideful and selfish and we will not want our way. That will always seek the highest good of another person, which is what love is. It's always seeking higher, the highest good of another person. Lord, I thank you. If we would live our lives like that, what kind of world would we have? I see it. Come on, you got to see it. It's happening. Come on, the church is awakening to it. The church is awakening to her true identity. The church is awakening to who she is. Hallelujah. We're awakening ourselves to the fact. Jesus, I thank you that you're going to have a victorious church in, the, in this time. That you're going to have a church, Lord, that's victorious, Lord. A bride, Father, without spot or wrinkle or blemish. You, Lord, are sanctifying your people. Sanctifying your church to go and to be and to do. So God, today, as we walk out of this room, we remember who we are. That I'm a peacemaker. I'm a manufacturer of peace. I give you praise. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. Make sure you're okay with the Lord tonight.